Hello, my dear viewers. This week, I made a short video about a very interesting place which is many times lost in the vast stretches of the city itself. We are visiting the Wyckoff House right here in Brooklyn, which is the oldest structure in New York City. Well, not just the oldest standing structure in New York City, but all of the state of New York, being built in 1652. It is so interesting to see this place because you go outside the fence and you have a modern city. McDonald's is right around the corner and people are walking by immersed in their thoughts and everyday tasks and problems. And yet right behind the fence, we have the oldest building in New York and really like a window into the past and how these streets used to look like over 350 years ago with the first colonial settlers. The Weichel family was one of the earliest settlers here in New York City going back to the days of this being a Dutch colony. In 1636, Peter Clayson Wyckoff came from Saxony, which is really modern day Germany, to America as a endangered servant. That was a fairly common practice at that time. To travel from Europe to a place like New York in the 1600s was very expensive. And so many people would sign like contracts where their voyage would be paid for and they would work for a given amount of years, usually like five or six years. That is how Peter Wyckoff found himself here, although more to the north, closer to the city of Albany. However, he eventually worked his debt off, he married, started a family, and moved to this part of Brooklyn as the Dutch tried to encourage early settlement as much as possible to grow not just the colony, but also to prevent the English from taking over these parts. Which eventually happened anyway, and the Dutch colony of New Amsterdam became New York. But by now, Peter settled into this house with his family. Here you can see not just the house itself, but like a small little garden in front, where they would grow variety of products, probably like squash, um, cabbage, corn, potatoes, and other fruits and vegetables, selling anything extra in the local market. Behind the garden, there is a small Native American dwelling, what I'm guessing would be like a wigwam. You see this arrangement of reeds into like a dome shape, and everything is tightened more to create a strong, rigid structure using thick branches, and covered further by a bark of a tree. So it's kind of interesting and really educational to see the different styles of building a shelter from a European perspective and a Native American style. Here we are looking at the back of the home where we have um, two entrances going into the cellar where things like food would be stored. And a small little garden here as well with a chicken coop. But no chickens. So you know what that means? I had to go on a quest to find out if there are actually chickens on the property. And yes, yes they are. But with all these leaves on the ground, they blended in pretty well with the environment. But you know what? Let's check out the inside of the house because that is where we can see a lot of interesting things. We have different examples of spoons and knives and check out this seat for kids, honestly. It's pretty cute. I love it. Here we have a spinning wheel which was used to spin fibers, let's say of wool, from the local sheep into a string and then make clothing out of it. We have also lots of examples of different pots and podgy pots where stews would be cooked over the fire. Here's something that we would use to make homemade butter. Hmm, homemade bread and like garlic butter. 
Those of you who have never tried it, you do not know what you're missing. Huh. You know, maybe in the future I should do like a video where we make our own bread and butter. That beats anything that you can buy in the store to eat. And also in the same room on the right, you see there is like a section that they expose the wall to show what it's really made up of. And you see like wood, branches, stones, like layers of them. And they are all covered by this material, which, again, I'm not an expert, but I know they would use things like clay, straw, and soil. They would mix these together and it would kind of combine into like a sticky paste. And that is what you would put um, on the stones and the layers of wood and things like that to make up the walls. In the next room, we have a few examples of beautiful blue and white porcelain pieces. Now, I honestly doubt they would have something like this in 1650s when this house was first built, simply because most of this came from Asia, from China, and it was just super expensive and rare. Going into the 1700s, it does become a little bit more commonplace for people to own them, but I doubt Peter Wyckoff himself in 1650 would own something like this, but rather probably later generations of the family who were living here. But hey, it's, it's definitely possible. I mean, if it is possible, I would be tremendously impressed. There is another fireplace with some examples of shoes and different items from around the house that they would be using, like a broom or the rug beater, which you see next to the broom. So before vacuum cleaners, you would take out the rug outside and basically smack their life out of it in order to clean it and get the dust out. And then finally, our third room with the original floors. Those are amazing. We have like a baby rocker, and I love the fact that you have like a hard design carved into it. It's a little bit of a touch of something special. And between the gaps of the floor itself, you can actually see the cellar below. Hence, in the winter, I am sure this added an extra layer of cold air leaking through the floorboards. And for those of you interested, there is even a small gift shop which you can grab something interesting to remember your trip. Now, Peter Wyckoff died in 1694 and is most likely buried right here in the Flatlands Reformed Church Cemetery, which is about two miles away from the Wyckoff House. I'm saying most likely because the congregation was already established in 1650s and Peter played an active role in it. Next to the current church building, there is a cemetery, and even though I was able to find few graves which belong to the members of the Wyckoff family, I was not able to locate the exact spot of where Peter is buried. As you see, the wording on the stones themselves is so eroded that you can barely read anything that is written on these stones. I am sure that the church has some sort of an archive of the cemetery and a, a list of who is buried here. Hence, if anybody would really want to dig around and really find out, I'm sure the graves could be identified where everyone is buried, but for the purpose of this video, I just wanted to really show you where the resting place of Peter Wyckoff is, the person whose house is now the oldest structure in New York. But you know what, that being said, you can still see some other places around the city which carry on the memory and the name of the Wyckoff family. For instance, here, in Woodhaven, Queens, so now we are about six miles away from the Wyckoff house, there is a cemetery in the back of this church here, which is the cemetery of the Wyckoff and Snydeker families who donated a piece of their farmlands onto which they could bury their family members, and not just their family members, but also members of 
the early Dutch settlers in the area. So it's kind of fascinating that hiding in between these streets and the church, there is a small plot of land which dates back to the earliest settlers. That's pretty interesting. There are street names like Wyckoff Avenue in Brooklyn. There is a township of Wyckoff in New Jersey named after the Wyckoff family. And one last thing I would like to point out, we have the Wyckoff Heights Medical Center in Brooklyn. Now, just something interesting about this hospital. It opened in 1899 as the German Hospital of Brooklyn to serve the large German community in the area. However, due to America's entry into World War I against Germany and the Central Powers, an anti-German hysteria developed to the point where the German hospital was renamed Wyckoff Hospital in 1918. And this, in fact, was not an isolated case. Due to the war, many German names and places around the city were renamed during this time period. For instance, the German-American Bank became the Continental Bank of New York. In other instances, German books were removed from libraries. German newspapers were either closed or significantly reduced. Streets were renamed. Many people changed their last names. And this was not even a phenomenon that you would find in America. For instance, Russia's capital city of St. Petersburg became Petrograd in 1914 to make it sound less German. In Britain, the royal family changed their name to the House of Windsor to make it less German as well. So it's an interesting topic in history. But with all this name changing taking place in the background of the war, the Wyckoff family name was added to yet another location carrying the name and history of the earlier settlers here in Brooklyn and Queens. I hope you enjoyed this video and got to see a bit more about New York and its history. And until I see you again, stay safe out there. Bye.